Hello and welcome to a brand new free English course. This time I'll be looking at some of the differences between British English and American English. Now, this course contains two parts. In the first part, I will talk about some words that are pronounced differently in British English and American English. So, for example, it will look like this. So, I will present you a word, for example, this word right here, bath. The British pronunciation of this word will be bath with an R sound and the American pronunciation will be bath. So in the first part of this free English course I will talk about the different ways of pronouncing the word and I will show you some examples from you know TV shows and movies etc. In the second part I will give you a little repetition exercise so I will say each word that I will present to you in the first part for example bath and then I will give you a little time to repeat the word. So I say bath, then you say bath in British English, and then I say bath in American English, and then you can, you know, repeat the word bath in American English. You can also just focus on British English if you just want to learn British English, or just focus on American English if you just want to learn American English. Now, before we begin, I quickly want to remind you that if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and if you want to listen to this as a podcast on Spotify, that is also possible. So you can either listen to this for free uh, as a podcast on Spotify or watch this on YouTube as a video or both, of course. So if you're new here, subscribe and follow me on Spotify. Now let's get started with some of the differences between British English and American English. Okay, first up we have the word that is spelled A-D-U-L-T. Now, how would you pronounce this word? In British English, the answer is adult. And what I want you to focus on here is the, the first letter, the A. It's really pronounced somewhere in between R and A. So it's not quite R, adult, and it's not quite adult either. Um, but somewhere in the middle, adult. And the focus of the, the pronunciation is really the first part of the word. So it's not adult, that would be the American way, it's adult. So in British English, uh, this word is in fact pronounced adult. Now, and I want to give a little disclaimer here at this stage, by the way, because there's obviously more than one British uh, English. There's one that I'm talking about here in the video, that's the generic British accent, okay? But there are many regional British accents and there are many regional American accents. Um, but in this video, I wanna focus on basically, you know, making sure you understand the differences between a general British accent and a general American accent. And so for this word, adult, um, you have to really focus on the first letter in my opinion. So in British English it's adult, adult, and in American English it would be more like adult. So the focus is on the second half of the word, not so much the A and the D. It's more adult. Here is an example for you uh, of the word adult in British English. You're an adult. And here is an example for you with the same word, but in American English, so it's more like adult. I'm an adult. Okay, now let's move on to the next word. How would you pronounce the word that is spelled B-A-T-H? How would you say that? Now, in British English, similar to the word we just, uh, you know, talked about, it would be bath. Now, again, not everyone in England would pronounce it exactly like that. Some might say bath with more of an F sound at the end, okay, now, but that's, you know, regional accents. Now I'm talking about a generic, a general British accent and many people in England would again pronounce the A like an R sound. So not bath, which would in fact be American, but bath. So the British way of pronouncing this word would be bath and the American way would be bath. With, with an air sound as opposed to an R sound. So here's a example for you. Here's an example of the word bath for you in British English. Have a bath. <laughs> Have a bath. And here's an example for you of the same word bath, this time in American English. It's bath day. Oh, I don't want to take a bath. 
Next up, we have the word that's almost the same as bath or bath, but it's spelled with a P at the end. So the word is P-A-T-H. How would you pronounce that? Let me know in the comments. Now, again, in British English, many people, in my opinion, would pronounce this word path or path or path. Basically, what I want to emphasize here is that the A is again pronounced like an R in British English. Not by everyone in, you know, England, but by many. So, path. And in American English, once again, the word is path with an A sound. And again, not everyone in America, you know, is going to say path exactly the way I do it right now. But what I want to stress here is the, the A again, the letter A, and it's usually pronounced like an A in this word. So, path in British English and path in American English. Here's an example for you of the word path in British English. This is the most direct path to the dormitories. And here's an example for you in American English. The only path is the virtuous path. Okay, next up we have the word M-A-T-H and plural would be M-A-T-H-S. How would you pronounce that word? Now, in British English, the word, first of all, has, you know, usually got an S at the end. It's muffs. Uh, and once again, I want to emphasize the A here. It's again pronounced like an R, so it's maths. And in American English, there is no S at the end. You know, I'm talking about the school subject now, math, which they do, in fact, just call math. And the A is once again pronounced like an A here. So math in American English, maths in British English. Here's an example for you of the word maths in British English. And maths. And maths. Yes. And here's an example for you of the word math in American English. Um, math. Math. Oh. The next word I want to talk about is spelled V-A-C-C-I-N-E. How would you pronounce this word? Let me know in the comments. In British English, the word would be pronounced vaccine. And again, the A is pronounced like an A, ah, vaccine. In American English, it would be more like vaccine with an A sound once again. So I hope it's, you know, what I'm trying to say is starting to sink in. Usually, you know, in British English, the A is pronounced like an A, ah, not all the time, but sometimes, many times, in fact. And in American English, it's usually an A. So an A, sorry. So in British English, the word is vaccine. And in American English, it's, it's more like vaccine with an air sound. Here is a, an example for you in British English. They take the original vaccine, the watery battery. And here's an example for you in American English. They have a vaccine! The next word is spelled L-A-U-G-H. How would you pronounce this word? In British English, people would say laugh or laugh. Basically, once again, with an R sound, laugh. Laugh. In American English, it would be more like laugh. Once again, with an R sound. And what's important here as well is that it, this word is, is spelled G-H at the end, but it's, it's really pronounced, you know, like an F. Laugh and laugh. Here's a, an example for you of the word laugh in British English. Laugh at us. And here's an example of the word laugh in American English. Don't you dare laugh at me. The next word I want to discuss is spelled C-L-A-S-S. And how would you pronounce this word? Would you sound British or American? Now, in British English, you may guess at this stage that the word is indeed pronounced class, not by everyone, but by some, class. And in American English, it would be more like class. Now, again, not everyone, but, you know, many. Many would say class in America and class in the United Kingdom. So here's an example for you of the word in, you know, in its British pronunciation. We're not allowed to leave the tower except for class. And here's an example of the American pronunciation. Class dismissed. The next word is spelled P-A-S-S. And in British English, it would be, it would be pronounced pass. And in American English, pass. So pass and pass. Here's an example for you for the British English pronunciation. We're not learning how to pass our owls. 
And here's an example of the American pronunciation. Did I pass out? The next word I want to talk about is spelled M-A-S-K. And how would you pronounce that one? Once again, in British English, people would say mask. And in American English, people might say mask. It is again the A I want to stress here. So mask with an R sound in British English and an A sound in American English. So mask and mask. Here's an example for you with the British English pronunciation. Take off your mask. And here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. What's the mask? No, it's gorilla mask. The next word is spelled C-H-A-N-C-E. How would you pronounce this word? In British English, it would be chance. And in American English, it would be chance. Now, here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. Should have took me while you had the chance. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation. There's a chance. The next word has just three letters, A-S-K. And you may already guess where this is going at this stage, okay? In British English, people would say ask. And in American, people would say ask. So again, it's ask with an R in British English and ask with an A sound in American English. Here's an example for you of the British English version. And what do you ask in return? And here's an example of the American English version. Well, ask her. Ask her, right. I should... The next word is spelled E-X-A-M-P-L-E. And how would you pronounce that word? In British English, people would say example, again with an R sound. And in American English, people would say example with an R sound. Here's a, an example for you of the word example in British English. Example. And here's an American English example for you. For example, the next word is spelled A-D-V-E-R-T-I-S-E-M-E-N-T, -E -E so it's a little longer. But once again, you might know where this is going at this stage. In British English, it would be advertisement or advertisement, maybe even. Uh, and in American English, it would be advertisement. Advertisement with an A sound. And the R in American English is also pronounced much more... Uh, round, much rounder in my opinion. So it's advertisement. And in British English, it's quite, you know, easy in my opinion. It's quite chill, if you want to call it that. Advertis advertisement? <laughs> yes. So it can be advertisement or advertisement. Here's an example for you in British English. These the first answers to the advertisement. And here's an American English example for you. Harry, that guy's a walking advertisement for the joys of fatherhood. The next word is spelled B-A-N-A-N-A. -A -N -A. It's a fruit. And how would you pronounce that one? Now, here it gets a little interesting because in British English, it would be banana. Um, so it would be, you know, all the A's are basically R's. Banana. 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 And in American English, it's quite similar, actually. But it's just the middle A is somehow pronounced differently. So in American English, it would be banana. Banana. So banana. And in British English, it would be banana. British English, banana. American English, banana. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. And here's an example of, of the American English pronunciation for you. You can hold the banana if that's what you mean. Now this next word is similar to banana. It is spelled C-A-B-A-N-A. -A -A. And in British English it would be pronounced cabana. So the same principle as in banana. But, you know, basically with a C, cabana. And in American English it's, you know, similar again. It's cabana. Cabana and cabana. The next word is spelled F-I-N-A-L-E. And in British English, this would be pronounced finale. Sorry, finale with an E at the end, not an E. That was my German pronunciation shining through there for a second. 
as it happens to be uh, also a German word. Anyways, the British English pronunciation is, again, with an R sound, so finale, R, and in American English it would be finale, so uh, with an A sound again, finale. Here's an example for you in British English. Except for the finale. <laughs> and here's an American English example. It's the finale. Next up, the next word is spelled K-H-A-K-I. In British English, this will be pronounced khaki. And in American English, this will be pronounced khaki. So again, the A in British English is pronounced R, so khaki, khaki. And in American English, khaki, with an A. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. Oh yes, khaki, king, kettle, Kuwait, keeble, bolly, Oxford. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation. I had him in light khaki, dark khaki, khaki. Next up, L-O-C-A-L-E. In British English, the word would be pronounced locale, again with an R. And in American English, it would be locale, with an R sound once again. So the same principle basically applies here. In British English, it's an R sound for the A, and in American English, it's an A sound. Locale, locale. Here's an example for you in British English. Truly sorry about the locale. And here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. You in some exotic locale. The next word is spelled M-A-S-C-A-R-A. And it's pronounced mascara in British English. And it's pronounced mascara in American English. So this is similar to banana, the word we just discussed. Um, in British English, they're basically all R's. All the A's in this word are pronounced as R's. Mascara. Mascara. And in American English, it's mascara with an A sound and a quite rounded R towards the end. Mascara. Mascara, blink, blot, spritz. The next word is spelled M O R A L E. And how would you pronounce that word? Let me know in the comments. In British English, you would say morale with an R sound. And in American English, you would say morale with an a sound and a very rounded R, morale. Here's an example of the British pronunciation for you. <laughs> morale. And here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. Pierce, morale is important. Next up, a place in the US. This place is spelled N-E-V-A-D-A. And in American English, you would say Nevada with an A sound. Although some Americans might also say Nevada which, in my opinion, is quite British-sounding, though. So the British way would be uh, Nevada. But, you know, since this is a place in America, I think it's, you know, it makes sense to say Nevada. Here's an example for you. We're in Nevada. The next word has two different spellings. Let's start with the British way of spelling this word. P-Y-J-A-M-A. And the American way of spelling this word would be P-A-J-A-M-A. Now, how would you pronounce this word? Let me know in the comments. The British way would be pyjama, with an R sound, for both A's. Pyjama. And in American English, it would be more like pyjama, with an A sound in the middle. Pyjama. Here's an example for you of the American way of pronouncing this word. Pyjama party. The next word is spelled P-A-K-I-S-T-A-N-I. And how would you pronounce this word? Let me know in the comments. In British English, uh, the word would be pronounced Pakistani with R's. And in American English, it would be Pakistani with S. With S sounding A's. Next up, we have a word that is spelled P-L-A-Q-U-E. And in British English, it would be pronounced plaque. With R, although some people in the UK might say plaque, but that is quite American as well. So in American English, it would be plaque. Here's an example of the American pronunciation. Minimal plaque, your heart is strong. The next word is spelled S-A-H-A-R-A, -A -A, and it's pronounced Sahara in British English. Sahara, 
with R sounding ace, and in American English it would be Sahara with an A sounding A in the middle. Sahara. Pits as dry as the Sahara. Next up, we have a word that is spelled S C E N A R I O, and the word is pronounced scenario in British English. Once again, with an R sounding A, and in American English it would be scenario. Scenario. Here's an example of the British pronunciation for you. I want us to to、uh, play out a scenario that highlights customer care.、Okay. And here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. Worst case scenario. The next word is spelled S O P R A N O, and in British English this would be pronounced soprano, with an R sounding A once again, and in American English it would be soprano with an A. Here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. A strapping male soprano. The next word is spelled T I A R A, and it's pronounced tiara in British English, and in American English it's tiara. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. Anyone else got a tiara? And here's an example of the American English pronunciation. Nice tiara. Next up, we have. A word that's spelled C Y C L O R A M A, and in British English it's pronounced cyclorama, with R sounding A again, cyclorama, and in American English it would be cyclorama. The next word is similar. It's spelled P A N O R A M A, and the same principle applies. So it's panorama in British English, and panorama in American English. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Panorama City off the 405.、So、I know where this is going. Next word is spelled C H A R A D E, and in British English it would be charade, but some people might also say charade, but that is also quite American in my opinion. So charade is quite British, and charade is more American. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. Fan the flames of our charade. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. So we set up this little charade. The next word is spelled T O M A T O, and in British English it would be tomato, with an R sound and quite a strong T at the end. Tomato, and in American English it would be tomato, so with an A sounding A and quite a soft T at the end. Tomato, almost like a D at the end. Tomato. Here's an example of the British pronunciation for you. Tomato.、Mm, I get it. And here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. It was like a tomato. The next word is spelled B-A-S-I-L, and in British English this is pronounced basil, with an R sound, and in American English it would be pronounced basil, with an A sound. Basil. Here's an example of the British pronunciation for you. No, basil. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. That is basil. <laughs> the next word is spelled a double p a r a t u s, and in British English it would be pronounced apparatus, apparatus, and in American English it would be more like apparatus. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. It is a room separating apparatus from colonial time. Ah.、Oh. Next up is a fruit. The fruit is spelled a p r i c o t.、Um, And in British English, this is pronounced apricot. And in American English, this would be pronounced apricot with an a sound. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation. The deceased Mr. Apricot is now disarmed. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation. I need a growth medium, and someone polished off the apricot yogurt. <laughs> the next word is spelled c o m r a d e, and the British way of saying this word would be comrade. With an a sound for once, comrade. And the American way of saying this would be comrade. Here's an example for you of the British pronunciation. Let's stay on comrade. And here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. Comrade who? Comrade Ivan from the TV show. The next word only has four letters: d a t a. And the British way of saying this would be data. Data. And some might say data. But I think most people in England, or you know, in Britain, would say data, and in American English it would be more like data. So the a would be pronounced a, data, 
and the tea is again very soft like in tomato. Data. Here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. Data. Data, where are you? The next word is spelled P-A-T-E-N-T. -E in British English, this would be pronounced patent or patent. So basically with an R sound again. And in American English, this would be pronounced patent. Here's an example for you of the American pronunciation. I've never applied for a patent before. The next word is spelled S-T-A-T-U-S. And in British English, this would be pronounced status. And in American English, it would be status. So again, with an A ah sound and a very soft T, status. Here's an example of the American pronunciation for you. And the next word is spelled A-S-P-H-A-L-T. Now, in British English, this would be pronounced asphalt, with an R sound at the beginning, asphalt. And in American English, it would be asphalt, with an A ah sound, asphalt. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Asphalt, hand, one minute. Now, this word is spelled A-M-E-N-I-T-Y. How would you pronounce this word in English? In British English, some people would say amenity. Now, this is the part where I want to give you a quick disclaimer, okay? There's, of course, many, many regional British accents, so people within the United Kingdom will pronounce this word differently, and the same goes for the American accent, but I'm talking about a general British accent and a general American accent. Now, in a general British accent, many people would say amenity, meaning they would pronounce the A at the beginning like an R, amenity, not amenity, and they will pronounce the E in the middle like a like an E sound, not like a A sound. So in British English, it would be pronounced amenity. In American English, it would be pronounced more like amenity with an A sound in the middle. So the E is pronounced more like an A, amenity. And the T at the end is very soft. It's not amenity, it's amenity. Here is an example for you with the British English pronunciation. And every other amenity you could possibly desire. Here is an example for you with the American English pronunciation. In chairs with every amenity African American male desires. The next word is spelled E V O L U T I O N. How would you pronounce this word in English? In British English, some people would say evolution evolution so the e at the beginning is pronounced like an e evolution and the entire last part of the word the t i o n is pronounced shun so not tion or something but shun evolution with a sh sound evolution evolution sorry <laughs> not evolution that would be american so the american way would indeed be evolution Again, I'm not saying that everyone in England says evolution and everyone in America says evolution. It could be, you know, vice versa in certain cases, but generally speaking, the British way would be more like evolution and the American way would be more like evolution. Here's an example of the British pronunciation for you. These primeval creatures define evolution. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Okay, look, I, I study evolution. The next word just has three letters, and there are many words that begin with this three-letter combination. The letters are E-C-O, and in British English, you would pronounce this eco. Again, not everyone would say eco, but many people do say eco. The whole point of this is that, once again, the E at the beginning is pronounced like an E, and not like an E or like an A. So in American English, it would indeed be more like echo. Um, here is an example for you of a word beginning with ECO in British English. A motorsport event that's presumably ecological in some way. Here's an example of a word beginning with ECO in American English for you. Economy plus. The next word is spelled H-Y-G-I-E-N-I-C. And how would you pronounce that word in English? Now, in British English, it would be pronounced hygienic with a long E sound in the middle, hygienic, hygienic. And in American English, it would be more like hygienic. And uh, once again, the, the uh, E at, towards the end there is pronounced like an uh, hygienic, hygienic. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. Put out some of this rubbish, which I have securely double-tied with a hygienic safety ribbon. 
Here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. That's hygienic. Oh, I... The next word is spelled L-E-V-E-R-A-G-E. -E, and you may know where this is going now. In British English, it would be pronounced leverage. Now, not everyone says leverage, okay? In the UK, I want to make that perfectly clear. Some people do indeed say leverage instead of leverage. That's indeed the American way of saying it, though. So the British English way would in my opinion, be to say leverage to pronounce the E at the beginning more like an E again, not like an E eh or E. Eh. The American way would be leverage. Here's an example for you of the British way of pronouncing this word. I have to use more leverage. Here's an example for you of the American way of pronouncing this word. For ways to leverage my obedience. The next word is spelled P-R-E-D-E-C-E-S-S-O-R. And in British English, once again, it would be pronounced predecessor. Predecessor, as opposed to the American way, which would be predecessor. So the E at the beginning is pronounced like an E in British English, predecessor. Again, not everyone does that. Some people say predecessor. Um, but the American way would be more like, you know, predecessor. And in British English, it would be predecessor. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. Mr. Robertson, your predecessor. Here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. My predecessor. The next word is spelled V-I-T-A-M-I-N. And in British English, it would be pronounced vitamin. Vitamin with an E sound for the I there at the beginning. Vitamin. And a very strong T sound. Vitamin. In American English, the I at the beginning would be pronounced like an I. So vitamin. And the T would be pronounced very soft, in my opinion, a very uh, soft T. Vitamin, almost like a D, vitamin. So vitamin and vitamin. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. My vitamin bullshit. Here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. It's got vitamin A, vitamin D. The next word is spelled P-R-I-V-A-C-Y. And in British English, this word would be pronounced privacy. In American English, it would be privacy. Now, some people, I'm sure, in the UK would say privacy. And some people in America might even say privacy. Privacy, privacy. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. Like a little privacy. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation. Privacy. Get it? The next word is spelled D-E-P-O-T. And this is where it gets interesting because in British English, this would be pronounced Depot. Not by everyone, but some people in the UK will pronounce this depot, meaning the E at the beginning is pronounced like a E eh sound, depot, and the T at the end is silent, so it's not depot. And in American English, the E at the beginning would be pronounced like an E, so it's depot with a very long E sound, depot. So in British English, it's depot. In American English, it's depot. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. Downslow depot. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Every train and bus depot. Bus depot. The next word is spelled L-E-I-S-U-R-E. -E. In British English, some people would pronounce this leisure. The E sound at the beginning is like a E sound, leisure. And in American English, some people will pronounce this leisure. So the E at the beginning is pronounced like an E sound, leisure. Not everyone in America, okay, not everyone does this, but some people do pronounce this leisure. Leisure and leisure. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. A creature of leisure. Here's an example for you of the American English pronunciation. Power and leisure. The next word is spelled P-R-E-S-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-N. -E and in British English, it would be pronounced presentation with an E uh sound for the E at the beginning, presentation. I'm sure some people in America would see it the same way and they would also say presentation, but some people in America also say presentation, presentation with an E sound at the beginning, presentation. Here's an example for you of the British pronunciation. Call that a presentation. And here's an example for you of the American pronunciation. Alice. Spectacular presentation, as usual. The next word is spelled Z-E-B-R-A. And how would you pronounce this one? Now, this animal is pronounced zebra 
in British English. Not by everyone, but many people would say zebra. In American English, it would be more like zebra. So the E at the beginning would be pronounced once again like an E sound, a quite long E as well, zebra. Here's an example for you of the British English pronunciation. We are called zebra. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation. Zebra in shorts. Zebra and giraffe. Now this next word is actually more than one word. It could be many words. For example, S-O-M-E-B-O-D-Y. So the word would be somebody, for example. Now in British English, what I want to emphasize here is the last part of this word, the B-O-D-Y, the body part, which would be more like an O oh sound, body, somebody. In American English, it would be more like somebody. Now not everyone would pronounce it that way. Once again, okay, not everyone would say somebody, where the O actually sounds more like an R sound, somebody. But many people in America do this. Here's an example of the British pronunciation. Hey, Ron, somebody broke into Gringotts. And here's an example of the American pronunciation. Somebody. The next word is spelled C-O-M-P-O-S-T. And... How would you pronounce this word? Let me know in the comments. In British English, this would be pronounced compost. Compost. In American English, it would be more like compost. The, the O at the end is very round. Compost in American English. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation. Compost. Compost. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Compost tea. The next word is spelled P R O. D-U-C-E. And in British English, this would be produce. Again, the O is pronounced like an A. Uh, produce. In American English, it would be more like produce. So the O is very round. Again, produce and produce. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation. Growing produce for the restaurant. The next word is spelled Y-O-G-U-R-T. And in British English, it would be pronounced yogurt. So once again, the O is more like an uh sound, yogurt. And in American English, it would be more like yogurt. So the O is very round, once again, yogurt. Yogurt and yogurt. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. One for yogurt. Here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. And yogurt. <laughs> the next word is spelled C-O-D-I-F-Y. And in British English, this would be pronounced codify. And some people in British English might pronounce this codify. And some people in American English might pronounce this codify. Codify, codify. Here's an example of the American version for you. On that, nobody bothers to codify. The next word is spelled P-R-O-C-E-S-S. In British English, this would be pronounced process. Of the unfreezing process. And in American English, it would be more like process. With an R sound, process. We're starting a process, Walt, an ongoing process. Okay, the word I'm looking at now is spelled D-Y-N-A-S-T-Y. Now, how would you pronounce this word? Let me know in the comments. In British English, some people would say dynasty. Not everyone. There's many regional accents. Some people will not say dynasty, but many people will say dynasty with the D sound at the beginning. Whereas in American English, many people would say dynasty. Now, in my opinion, many people in, in the UK would also say dynasty. Um, but it's, that is quite American, in my opinion. So here is an example of the British way of saying dynasty. I'm furthering a dynasty. And here's an example of the American pronunciation. It's a damn dynasty. The next word I want to discuss is spelled I-D-Y-L-L. And in British English, this would be pronounced idyll, with an E sound, idyll. And in American English, it would be more like idol, where the I at the beginning is actually pronounced like an I, so idol. And here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. It sounds idyllic. And here's an example of the American pronunciation. Isn't it idyllic? Mm. Now, the following word is spelled I-T-A-L-I-C. And in British English, some people would say italic, with an E sound for the I. And in American English, it would be more like italic, italic, with an I sound for the I, the beginning letter. Uh, no, this is not 
what I picked out. I picked out flourished italic. The next word is spelled S-I-M-U-L-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. And in British English, it would be pronounced simultaneous. And I want to emphasize the I again at the beginning. It would be sim, simultaneous. Whereas in American English, it would be more like simultaneous. So the I would be again pronounced like an I, simultaneous. Full with a simultaneous spread of torpedo. The next word is spelled C-I-V-I-L-I-S-A-T-I-O-N. And in American English, it would be actually spelled with a Z instead of an S. So it would be C-I-V-I-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N. Now, in British English, it would be pronounced civilization. Civilization, shmivilization. And again, I want to emphasize the I in the middle this time. Civilization. Civilization. Whereas in American English, it would be more like civilization. A phone and mild from civilization. The next word is spelled R-E-S-P-I-T-E. And in British English, it would be pronounced respite. Respite. So the I is once again pronounced like an I this time, not like an E. Enjoying your brief respite. Whereas in American English, it would be more like respite. So the I is pronounced like an I uh, again, respite. Here's an example for you. God has given you this respite to heal. The next word is spelled S-U-B-S-I-D-E-N-C-E. And in British English, this would be pronounced subsidence. Now again, not everyone would pronounce it that way. But many people do. Subsidence. My point is that the I is once again like an E, uh, so like the earlier words I discussed. Subsidence. And in American English, it would be more like subsidence, with an I sound this time for the American version. Subsidence. The next word is spelled S-Y-N-A-P-S-E. And in British English, it would be synapse. Synapse. And in American English, it would be more like synapse. Synapse. He's suffering from neural synapse damage. Okay, this next word you might have come across already in the past. Um, it's spelled S Q U I R R E L. So it's an animal. And this is a word that many people have problems with pronouncing, especially if they're not native English speakers, including myself, really. Now, in British English, this word is pronounced something like squirrel. Now, it's not exactly squirrel. <laughs> See, I still have trouble saying this. There was my German accent shining through there for a second, okay? Squirrel. That's the British English. My point is that everything is pronounced quite clearly here. It's squirrel. Whereas in American English, it would be more like squirrel. So the R's are very rounded in American English. Squirrel. And the E at the end is kind of not pronounced almost. It's squirrel. It's just squirrel and all in American English, squirrel. Here's an example of the British English pronunciation for you. Just to make a clockwork squirrel. And here's an example of the American English pronunciation for you. Squirrel! 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 Okay, this next word is spelled R-E-C-O-R-D. And in British English, it would be pronounced record. Record. Uh, the C in the middle of the word is pronounced like a K. Record. Prothero's military record. In American English, it would be more like record. So the O is pronounced differently than in British English. In British English, it's record. And I don't know if you can see this maybe in the video. I'm making my, my mouth quite round. The lips are getting quite round for record in the British English version. Whereas in the American English version, it's more like record. So the O is more like the R, record. Here is an example for you. Listening to a record. What record? The next word is spelled M-E-T-A-P-H-O-R. And again, I'm going to emphasize the O here. So in British English, it would be metaphor. The T is quite strong, uh, strongly pronounced in my opinion as well. So it's meta and then for. A metaphor. Whereas in American English, it would be more like metaphor. So the T is very soft. It's almost like a D, meta. It's not meta, it's meta. It's a metaphor. The next word is spelled A-M-A-Z-O-N. You probably know the brand, who doesn't? And in British English, this would be pronounced Amazon. Amazon. With the A at the beginning, is pronounced like an R. And the A in the middle as well. And the Zon at the end is quite soft. Amazon. Amazon. Amazon thingy. 
are wicked. In American English, it would be more like Amazon. So the A at the beginning, first of all, is pronounced like an like an A, Amazon, and the O is quite round, Amazon. So in British English, it would be more like Amazon, and in American English, Amazon. In Amazon. The same principle applies for this next word here. It's spelled C R A Y O N. In British English, it would be crayon. They are novels. They're novelettes. It's in crayon, you book. And in American English, it would be more like crayon. So I want to again emphasize the O here at the end. Crayon and crayon in American English. Maybe it's not a crayon made of wax. The next word is spelled L-E-X-I-C-O-N. And in British English, this would be pronounced lexicon. Lexicon. And in American English, it would be more like lexicon. Lexicon. So again, I want to, you know, emphasize the O at the end. In British English, it would be more like lexicon with a kin sound at the end. And in American English, it would be more like lexicon with a ah sound at the end. Well, perhaps you can help me to broaden my lexicon. The next word is spelled M-A-R-A-T-H-O-N. And again, the same principle applies. So in British English, it would be marathon. Marathon. And in American English, it would be more like marathon. So the same principle applies with the O. Uh, Christmas movie marathon. The next word is spelled M-A-S-C-O-T. And again, the same principle applies. So it's mascot in British English. Mascot. It's actually quite a German way of pronouncing this word, I find. Mascot. And in American English, it would be more like mascot. So the, the O at the end is once again like a uh sound. Mascot. Oh my god. They told us that was for the mascot. The next word is spelled P-A-R-A-G-O-N. And in British English, it would be paragon. Paragon. Get a message to this paragon of yours, discreetly. And in American English, it would be paragon. The O principle applies again. So it's paragon and paragon. This spell turns the sorcerer into a sort of paragon. The best of everything. Everyone's ideal. Next word is P-Y-T-H-O-N. And in British English, it would be python. This time the O is, you know, like a, almost not pronounced, it's python. The python. Yeah. And in American English, it would be python. Python. Could I have a hundred dollars for a python? <laughs> and it's the same principle with the next word. Uh, the next word is spelled S-A-F-F-R-O-N. And in British English, it would be saffron. Saffron. And in American English, it would be saffron. Saffron. Oh, saffron, that sounds good. The next word is spelled S-I-L-I-C-O-N. And in British English, some people might say silicon. Silicon integrated circuit. And in American English, some people might say silicon. But some people might also say silicon, especially when I talk about Silicon Valley. Silicon dioxide in the tracks. Silicon dioxide, you mean sand? The next word is spelled P-O-L-Y-G-O-N. And in uh, British English, this would be pronounced polygon. Polygon. And in American English, it would be more like polygon. And again, I want to emphasize the O sound at the end here. Polygon with an on sound and polygon with an R sound for the American way. I'm kind of polygon. The next word is spelled T-A-B-O-O. And in British English, it would be taboo with an R sound at the, at the beginning, taboo. Definitely a taboo against that. Plus, if she got disfigured... Whereas in American English, it would be more like taboo, with an A sound for the A letter. Taboo. Taboo? Or trailblazing. And the next word is almost the same. It's spelled T-A-T-T-O-O. And it's pronounced tattoo in British English. Tattoo. It's actually the same in German. Tattoo. Tattoo. What the hunter told you the tattoo leads to. And in American English, it would be more like tattoo. And I want to emphasize the A at the beginning here. It's not tattoo. So the, the A is not an R in American English. The, it's more like tattoo with an A sound once again. It's covered in a tattoo that only Jeremy Gilbert of all people know. The next word is spelled T-O-U-R-N-A-M-E-N-T. And in British English, it would be tournament. 
As from this moment, the Triwizard Tournament has begun. And in American English, it would be more like tournament. Tournament. The T-O-U-R is pronounced quite differently. So it's tournament and tournament. I won that tournament. The next word I want to discuss is spelled H-E-R-B. Now, this time, this is quite interesting because in British English, the H is basically pronounced. So it's herb. It starts with a H sound, with an H sound. A rather rare herb, Gillyweed. And in American English, the H is not pronounced in many cases. So it's herb. Not herb, that would be British, although some people in America might pronounce the H as well. But in American English, it's often pronounced herb without the H sound. I think they're herbs, maybe. Th All right, so the first two words I want to talk about is airplane. That's American English, and that's spelled A-I-R-P-L-A-N-E. And in British English, people also say airplane, okay? Now, this is time, it's time for a disclaimer here, I guess, that, you know, I just want to say that many people obviously say these words in both British English and American English. And just because I say something as British English here does not mean that Americans do not say them or, you know, Canadians or Australians etc. Okay, this is just uh, standard British English versus standard American English. Of course, there are exceptions. Now, many people say airplane in British English, of course, but in British English, you will also hear aeroplane, spelled A-E-R-O-P-L-N-E. Uh, so, aeroplane in British English and airplane in American English. Here's an example for you. A bit like an aeroplane. <laughs> And here's one more example for you. Oh, airplane. We got an airplane. Okay, the next example I want to talk about is American football. That's what British English people, you know, would say. Many people would say American football as opposed to just football, which is what people in America would say. Now, when people in Britain and Europeans talk about football, they usually mean you know, a different sport, a sport that is called European football or soccer in America. So it gets a little confusing here, but basically in American English, you know, it's just called football and in British English, it would be called American football. Football is spelled F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L, -L, football and American football. Here's an example for you. It's football! It's just football! Okay, the next words I want to talk about is the American Revolution. Now, in American English, this is called the American Revolution. This is a historical event that's obviously very important. I'm sure, I, I hope you are familiar with it. Um, now, the American Revolution is obviously used in the American English language. Now, the interesting thing is that in British English, different words are used. The words that are used are, you know, they, they use American War of Independence. So in British English, this is called, this entire event is called American War of Independence. Whereas in American English, it's just called the American Revolution, because it was, of course, a revolution. Okay, so British English, American War of Independence. It's the American War of Independence. And American English, American Revolution. We're studying the American Revolution now. The next example I want to talk about is eggplant. So in American English, this is called eggplant. Uh, it's spelled e -double -G -P -L -A -N -T, E-G-G-P-L-A-N-T, eggplant. And in British English, the word is aubergine. Now, like I previously said, not everyone in America will say eggplant and not everyone in Britain will say aubergine. However, many people do. Uh, aubergine is spelled A-U-B-E-R-G-I-N-E. And here's an example for you of the British English version. And then we got some grilled aubergine with some feta. And here's an example of the American English version. Here's an eggplant. <laughs> the next words I want to talk about are basically holidays. So what I'm talking about is a public holiday. In American English, it's simply called a public holiday. Now, in British English, public holidays are called bank holidays. Because, of course, the banks are closed on public holidays. So it is a bank holiday. Bank as in, you know, the financial institution. B-A-N-K. Bank. Here's an example for you of the British English version. It's Bank Holiday Monday. Recovery Monday. And here's an example of the American English version. Harvey Dent Day may not be our oldest public holiday. Okay, the next words have to do with clothing. In American English, something is basically custom-made. 
uh, custom made is spelled c-u-s-t-o-m-m-a-d-e custom made for example a suit you know a business suit for men or women can be custom made in british english the word used is not custom made although some do use that word custom made but the word used is bespoke bespoke is spelled b-e-s-p-o-k-e bespoke here's an example for you of the british version bespoke suit always fits and here's an example of the american version they were custom made all right the next two words i want to look at is bff bff is actually short for best friends forever and this is used in american english to basically describe a bestie a best friend and bff is very common in america some people would also say bff in british english in my opinion uh, however, many people in, in Britain would say bestie or something along the lines of that, best friend. is basically what that means, bestie. Bestie is spelled B-E-S-T-I-E, -E, bestie. Here's an example for you. BFF, best friends forever. All right, next up, I want to talk about a baking ingredient. In American English, it's called baking soda. You probably know what it is. I mean, at least I hope you do. And in British English, it's sometimes called bicarbonate of soda. Uh, I have also seen, of course, you know, packages that say baking soda. So baking soda is very common internationally, in my opinion, not just, you know, in America. Uh, so people will say baking soda in British English as well. But people also say bicarbonate of soda in British English. Bicarbonate of soda. Next up, I want to talk about a specific kind of pen. In American English, this is called ballpoint pen. So ball as in B-A-L-L -L, and then point as in P-O-I-N-T. And then pen, P-E-N, ballpoint pen, ballpoint pen. And in British English, people would say biro, B-I-R-O. Now, again, not everyone in Britain will say biro. Some people will say ballpoint pen. And again, not everyone in America will say ballpoint pen. However, many people do. So here's an example of the British version for you. Oh, take out the biro, sir. And here's an example of the American version for you. It's a Fisher ballpoint pen with a custom nib. Okay, the next example I want to talk about is they're actually two different things, but I still want to mention them because they get changed by people, they get used by people all the time, and they get interchanged by people is what I mean. Um, so in British English, the word is biscuits. That's actually plural, uh, spelled B-I-S-C-U-I-T-S, -I -I biscuits. In American English, the word would be cookies or at least many people think it is cookies c-o-o-k-i-e-s so biscuits and cookies however biscuits and cookies are technically not the same thing there's actually a difference basically cookies are very you know soft and you will find many items in britain that actually say cookies on the packaging so the word cookie is very common in america and in britain and you know australia new zealand canada etc basically worldwide you could even find cookies, you know, a package that says, you know, cookie, chocolate cookie or whatever in, in Germany, my home country, if you, if you like, you know. Um, however, biscuits are very popular in Britain. So I'm not talking about cookies now. I'm actually talking about biscuits. They are basically harder. And that's why I'm mentioning them here, because they are so popular in Britain. So biscuits. Biscuits. And cookies. Cookies? All right, the next example has something to do with books. Basically, in America, you could go to a book store. So, B-O-O-K-S-T-O-R-E, -O -O -E, bookstore. In British English, you would say bookshop. This is work, by the way, my little travel bookshop. Now, again, not everyone does this. There are exceptions, of course, but many people do say bookshop as opposed to a bookstore. In the bookstore. Okay, the next two words are both kind of slang. In American English, many people say bro. Bro is kind of short for brother. And bro is a slang word for, you know, kind of a, a, another man, a dude. You know, people say bro for to like a friend. Uh, it's very common in both American English and British English. In my opinion, many people say bro. People even say bro in, in Europe these days. Everyone says it, you know, German people, Polish people, you know, everyone. Um... So, but the, there's a British English alternative, and that's not as commonly known, in my opinion, and that's actually bruv. Bruv is also short for brother. However, it's spelled B-R-U-V, bruv. And 
not many people outside of the United Kingdom may know this word, which is why I'm including it here. So, bruv and bro. Here's an example of the British English version. Still you, bruv. And here's an example of the American English version. Bro. All right, first words are building work in British English. Building work is spelled B-U-I-L-D-I-N-G and then work, so W-O-R-K, building work. Now, in American English, you would say construction work as opposed to building work. Construction is spelled C-O-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-I-O-N, W-O-R-K. And the differences here are obviously that in the UK, if you would work as, you know, if you would work in building work, you would be a builder. And in American English, you would say that someone works in construction. So this person might be a construction worker. So the two words I want to highlight here is basically building and construction. And now it's time for a quick disclaimer. Not everyone in the UK will say building work and not everyone in America will say construction work. There are, of course, exceptions. Now, here's an example of the British English term. Builders. Ah, oh, the builders. And here's an example of the American English term. And freak Buffy. Too strong for construction work. Next up, it's time to talk about a body part. Now, in British English, you could call this certain body part a bum. B-U-M. Bum. There are several other words for it, um, but I'm trying to keep it polite here, okay? So, in British English, many people would say bum. Not everyone, but many people do say bum. B-U-M. In American English, people would say but as opposed to bum. But is spelled B U. Double T. Now, this is not to be confused with the word but, you know, but with one T, um, because it has, in fact, two T's. And if Americans talk about a but, that usually means they talk about, you know, that certain body part. Here's an example of the British English word. Right, I'll never forget one conversation like, does my bum look big in this? And here's an example of the American English word. My butt! Your butt. The next word is bum bag in British English. So we just had bum and now the word is bum bag. So B-U-M-B-A-G, bum bag. And I'm going to display a bum bag on the screen right now so you know what I'm talking about. Um, because in American English, this is in fact called a fanny pack. Fanny is spelled F-A-N-N-Y-P-A-C-K, fanny pack. But in British English, this is called a bum bag. Now again, not everyone will say bum bag or fanny pack. Uh, but many people do. Here's an example of the British English version. Um, I've actually got a secret camera in my bum bag. And here's an example of the American English version. My fanny pack. One thing I do want to mention as well, actually, is that the word fanny in British English does mean something else. So be careful if you're in the UK. I would strongly suggest to not say that word. All right, the next words are car boot in British English. C-A-R-B-O-O-T. Now, many people will just say boot as opposed to car boot. I'm just, you know, including the word car in here so it's really clear what I'm talking about. And if you're not a native speaker, you can say car boot. That way it will be clear what you are talking about, you know, in British English. Car boot. In American English, the same word would be car, but then trunk as opposed to boot. T-R-U-N-K, trunk. Car trunk and car boot. Here's an example of the British English words for you. And also, you might need to remove the wheels if you're packing it into a small car boot. And here's an example of the American English words for you. In the trunk of our car. All right, the next words are car park in British English and parking lot in American English. Now, in British English, this is quite straightforward in my opinion. Car park is spelled C-A-R-P-A-R-K, car park because you can, you know, park your car there. It's logical, in my opinion. And in American English, it would be parking lot. So P-A-R-K-I-N-G-L-O-T, parking lot. Uh, this time, I would suggest to always say car park and not just park. If you leave the car out of this, it becomes less clear what you're talking about. So whereas with a boot and a trunk, you can say that without the car in front of it. So you can just say, you know, I put something in the, the boot or the trunk. It's not the same with car park in British English. So you have to say car and park together. Because if you just say park, it could be another kind of park. There's all different kinds of parks 
in the UK and in US for that matter, in the US as well. But for this specific example, I would, you know, recommend to say car park and American English, like I said, parking lot. Here's an example of the British English words. And here's an example of the American English words for you. There, the parking lot. The next example is charity shop in British English. Charity is spelled C-H-A-R-I-T-Y, S-H-O-P, charity shop, two words. And this is a kind of shop, as the name suggests, where you can buy things that are used and the money goes to a good cause. Charity. Charity shop. In American English, you would call this a thrift store. Or some people might call this a thrift store. T-H-R-I-F-T-S-T-O-R-E. And the pronunciation here is a little tricky because of the TH, in my opinion. If you're not a native English speaker, depending on where you're from, this might be quite tricky. So it's important to say thrift. I'm putting my tongue between my teeth when I say thrift. Thrift store. Thrift store. Here's an example of the British English words for you. So I would say I'm going to the charity shop on Saturday. I need to take 50 things with me. And here's an example of the American English words for you. Don't say thrift store. Thrift store! Next up, I want to talk about a kind of show. In British English, some people may call this a chat show because they're chatting. C-H-A-T-S-H-O-W. Chat show. Chat show. Two words. In American English, this is known as a talk show. T-A-L-K-S-H-O-W. Two words again, talk show. Now, many people in the UK will also say talk show, in my opinion. Many people all over the world will say talk show. This is a very international term. However, in British English, you may also hear the words chat show. Here's an example for you. The chat show is a quintessential populist medium. And here's another example for you. Next up, I want to talk about a way to pay for something. You may know this, depending on your age. The word is check. Now, the word is basically the same in British English and American English. However, it's spelled very differently in British English and American English. So let's start with British English. The spelling here is S-H-E-Q-U-E. So it's check. In American English, it's simply spelled C-H-E-C-K, check. Now, the problem with that word then is that this can also mean something else. You could check something. I'm checking the time or I'm checking something else. This becomes a bit confusing. So in my opinion, the British spelling makes a bit more sense because it makes it clear that, you know, you're, you're dealing with a financial way of paying. You're paying for something with a check. So it's check in both British English and American English. Here's an example for you. I saw the check. Next up. In British English, the words are chest of drawers slash drawers. So you would say it's a chest of drawers. The word chest is spelled C-H-E-S-T. Off is spelled O and F. And then drawers or drawers, D-R-A-W-E-R-S or D-R-A-W-S. Drawers or drawers. Chest of drawers. In American English, you would say a dresser. D-R-E-S-S-E-R, a dresser. So, chest of drawers in British English and dresser in American English. Here's an example for you. Uh, dresser drawer. What? Next up, I want to talk about food. A certain kind of food that people all over the world love. In British English, people call this chips. Now, chips are a very specific kind of uh, sliced potato that uh, usually is served with fish in the United Kingdom. So, people would often go to eat Fish and chips, for example. That's a very popular meal in the United Kingdom. You would often see this on menus. You would uh, hear about it. Fish and chips. Uh, the point here is that chips is spelled C-H-I-P-S. And the word chips, when you hear it, it might mean something else, where you're from. Uh, it does in Germany, where I'm from, for example. So in American English, the words would be French fries or just fries. French as in F-R-E-N-C-H and fries as in F-R-I-E-S. So the thing is, they're not actually the same thing. So there's a difference between the British version of chips and fries. So what I'm saying here is in the UK, they also have 
French fries, they have fries as well. So for example, when you go to McDonald's or another fast food chain, you can, of course, get French fries, fries, these, you know, smaller versions of chips, basically, because chips are quite chunky, they're quite big and large. And there is a difference, in my opinion, between chips and French fries. However, you know, many people will tell you that uh, they are confused when they hear the word chips because they think, in fact, of another type of food. They, they, think, they think of crisps. Those things are called crisps in the UK. Um, and that's where it gets a little confusing. And I'm not even talking about Australian English because it would get even more confusing. Then. But basically, chips and French fries. Here's an example of the British English word. I like fish and chips, early to bed. And here's an example of the American English word. Oh, French fries, God, I love French fries. All right, that was the first part of this free English course about British English versus American English. Now I'm going to repeat the words once more, but this time I will give you a little time to repeat after me. It's a little repetition exercise that way you can really learn the words. I would also recommend to watch that part repeatedly if that helps you. Let's get started. British English, adult. American English, adult. British English, bath. American English, bath. British English, path. American English, Path. British English, maths. American English, math. British English, vaccine. American English, vaccine. British English, laugh. American English, laugh. British English, class. American English, class. British English, pass. American English, pass. British English, mask. American English, mask. British English, chance. American English, chance. British English, ask. American English, ask. British English, example. American English, example. British English, advertisement. American English, advertisement. British English, banana. American English, banana. British English, cabana. American English, cabana. British English, finale. American English, finale. British English, khaki. American English, khaki. British English, locale. American English, locale. British English, mascara. American English, mascara. British English, morale. American English, morale. British English, Nevada. American English, Nevada. British English, Pajama. American English, Pajama. 
British English, Pakistani. American English, Pakistani. British English, Plak. American English, Plak. British English, Sahara. American English, Sahara. British English, Scenario. American English, Scenario. British English, Soprano. American English, Soprano. British English, Tiara. American English, Tiara. British English, Cyclorama. American English, Cyclorama. British English, Panorama. American English, Panorama. British English, Charade. American English, Charade. British English, Tomato. American English, Tomato. British English, Basil. American English, Basil. British English, Apparatus. American English, Apparatus. British English, Apricot. American English, Apricot. British English, Comrade. American English, Comrade. British English, data. American English, data. British English, patent. American English, patent. British English, status. American English, status. British English, asphalt. American English, asphalt. British English, amenity. American English, amenity. British English, evolution. American English, evolution. British English, eco. American English, echo. British English, hygienic. American English, hygienic. British English, leverage. American English, leverage. British English, predecessor. American English, predecessor. British English, vitamin. American English, vitamin. British English, privacy. American English, privacy. British English, depot. American English, depot. British English, leisure. American English, leisure. British English, presentation. American English, 
Presentation. British English, zebra. American English, zebra. British English, somebody. American English, somebody. British English, compost. American English, compost. British English, produce. American English, produce. British English, yogurt. American English, yogurt. British English, codify. American English, codify. British English, process. American English, process. British English, dynasty. American English, dynasty. British English, idyll. American English, idol. British English, italic. American English, Italic. British English, simultaneous. American English, simultaneous. British English, civilization. American English, civilization. British English, respite. American English, Respite. British English, subsidence. American English, subsidence. British English, synapse. American English, synapse. British English, squirrel. American English, Squirrel. British English, record. American English, record. British English, metaphor. American English, metaphor. British English, Amazon. American English, Amazon. British English, crayon. American English, crayon. British English, lexicon. American English, lexicon. British English, marathon. American English, marathon. British English, mascot. American English, mascot. British English, paragon. American English, paragon. British English, python. American English, python. British English, saffron. American English, saffron. British English, silicon. American English, silicon. British English, polygon. American English, polygon. British English, taboo. American English, taboo. British English, Tattoo. American English, tattoo. British English, tournament. American English, tournament. British English, herb. American English, herb. British English, aeroplane. 
American English, airplane. British English, American football. American English, football. British English, American War of Independence. American English, American Revolution. British English, aubergine. American English, eggplant. British English, bank holiday. American English, public holiday. British English, bespoke. American English, custom made. British English, bestie. American English, BFF. British English, bicarbonate of soda. American English, baking soda. British English, biro. American English, ballpoint pen. British English, biscuits. American English, cookies. British English, bookshop. American English, bookstore. British English, Bruv. American English, bro. British English, building work. American English, construction work. British English, bum. American English, butt. British English, bum bag. American English, fanny pack. British English, car boot. American English, car trunk. British English, car park. American English, parking lot. British English, charity shop. American English, thrift store. British English, chat show. American English, talk show. British English, check. American English, check. British English, chest of drawers. American English, dresser. British English, Chips, American English, French fries. All right, congratulations, you made it until the end of this free English course. Now, like I mentioned previously, you can watch certain parts repeatedly if you struggle with certain words. So if you can't remember them, you're obviously welcome to watch this more than once. You don't have to watch the whole course in one setting either. You can watch, you can watch it in parts. And like I said, this is episode five, so make sure to watch the other episodes as well to learn more differences between British English and American English. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Spotify, follow me on other social media. I'm also on YouTube Shorts. I have a Shorts channel if you want to learn English daily in smaller bite-sized videos. That's also linked in the description underneath this free English course. And I encourage you to watch another course right now. For example, this one right here.